Joining us now to talk about who won the ad battle, Kevin Krim, EDO uh, Inc. President and CEO. We talked all about this. I watched the game. I don't. I didn't notice myself any difference in what I was supposed to be doing. Was it, it involved QR codes and measuring what I was thinking and doing? And there were a lot of QR codes. Yes. Uh, there was a lot more retail ads than normal uh, for Amazon's first Black Friday. NFL broadcast. Uh, we saw more credit card ads. We saw uh, the usual contingent of automakers in the, in the game. Um, so it was an interesting mix. And a lot of what Amazon was experimenting with was at the beginning in the pregame, where they did some very in innovative things. Uh, they had one of their talent, Ryan Fitzpatrick, a Harvard man and a, and a, and a, and a great NFL uh, quarterback. Uh, he had to hit a certain number of passes to unlock a 30% discount on this. Uh, Lego Harry Potter castle, uh, and, and he did it, of course. And, uh, and it was those kinds of, I think, things that really marked a different kind of broadcast. But that was pregame. Once the game got started, it really is still, it's an NFL game on Black Friday. Yeah, which I'll take. Uh, yeah. Which is, you know. Unless... Matchup aside. Exactly, matchup aside. Uh, I don't know. I did. That's a whole different issue on, on what the Jets uh, need, need to do at, at this point. What data do we have uh, in terms of how everything, have you collated anything? Do we know yeah, what? yeah. Well, I mean, I think, um, first of all, despite the matchups, and, and I'd say, you know, despite a lot of star power on, on the, the Thursday, Thanksgiving Day games and on Black Friday, uh, the, the matchups themselves weren't that exciting at this point. There were some blowouts, and, and that usually depresses both the number of people watching and the engagement with both the programming and with the ads in the programs. But we had, uh, it's still Thanksgiving. The NFL still owns Thanksgiving. Um, now they own Black Friday, too. And uh, when, people, when people have NFL as an option, uh, they do show up in big numbers. So the ratings were quite good from Nielsen. And then uh, EDO's data showed that the ad performance was also quite strong. What's really interesting is the, is the shift in the mix of advertisers um, when, you, when it comes to Thanksgiving. Because you've got automakers kicking off their holiday sales events, you've got the retailers obviously kicking off their big push for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and beyond. And the, the difference, uh, the thing we saw last year was that if, if you were a retailer who advertised in that Thanksgiving Day uh, set of games, you saw a 314% lift in the engagement with your ads for not just that day, but for the week following hmm. than you did prior weeks um, leading up to it. So, so it's expensive, but it's worth it. It's expensive. It's worth it. It coincides with consumer need and demand, right? Consumers are getting very much into the mindset of holiday shopping, and the retailers are rightly responding to that. The interesting trend this year that I saw that was fascinating was the number of ads that focused very heavily on big discount messages. And the consumers this year responded very aggressively to those ads. We saw higher spikes in engagement with those ads than we've typically seen for those kind of promotional stories in the past. And that kind of response, I think, says something about what those retailers understand about their consumers, whether it's Walmart, who had a very clever strategy. Um, of, of course, Amazon really blanketed Black Friday. But you had Target um, heavily exposed on, on Thursday's uh, Thanksgiving Day games. Old Navy did some innovative things. So I'd say those were some of the interesting things I saw. We had um, the head of Prime Sports here on Friday. And the reported number is $100 million, that that's what Amazon paid the NFL to have a Black Friday game. It was the first time they'd done it since 1962 or 63. How come it wasn't there before? I mean, it just seems like a no-brainer for the NFL to have put that there, the idea that it would take somebody paying them, because if you build it, they will come. Right. I think there's been a really synergistic relationship between the NFL and Amazon and Amazon Prime Video. I think Amazon is showing the NFL new things. I think the NFL is willing to try new things with new partners like, like Amazon in ways that the, in, in, traditionally in the past they weren't. And so I think that's, it's fascinating that it took this long to get here. It makes a ton of yeah, sense. But it, it wasn't the NFL before they did it. It was the AFL. That's how far back this goes. Wow. The, wow. To the 60s. Yeah. But, it, it, you know. It seemed like a no-brainer. Okay, yeah, you'll, you'll control one more day of that Thanksgiving holiday. That's right. And, it, and, and I'd say college football and the NBA both typically would want to be competitors on that day, and, and the NFL kind of crowded its way in and yeah. with a big partner like Amazon. There were good uh, college games on, too. On, there were. On Friday. I don't know why. A lot of them, though. Uh, yeah, and, a lot of rivalries. Yeah. It's, it's great. So many more games for me to lose. Um, <laughs>
I mean, like, like a whole new stable. Uh, and I did have Same. Michigan. I, I did have Michigan in the over. Hmm. I did. I was the old, like the only one I won. Um, GM's not going to advertise at the Super Bowl. Can you figure that out? It, uh, what, what, that, that, that's a commentary on where GM is more than, than whether it's still good to advertise. It's expensive. I think, that's, I think that's right. I think it's, it's often a commentary about where the automaker is financially, where their product lineup is, and whether they've got a new model to launch. The, the best thing to do with the Super Bowl if you're an automaker is to launch a, a hot new vehicle. That works incredibly well, especially if you bring a great creative idea, a great creative story to the, to the, to the game. Um, if you don't have that, it can often be a very expensive exercise in, in pure brand. Um, and those stories, you can tell them in less expensive places. The NFL playoffs, for example, not nearly as expensive, also very, very high performing. You've got the college football playoffs and the college football national championship all around the same time of year. They're all very strong don't necessarily have to go with the, the full expense of the Super Bowl. So as far as the NFL goes, they're, they're, they've been trying to walk that line. They're, there's still more product that, that they, I think, could, could put somewhere. Isn't there? What should, who's, who's in charge of that? Goodell? Uh, is, uh, the people that he had? You must know uh, those people. I think what? it's Commissioner Goodell. I think it's a committee well, of a pretty owners. good job so far. Craft, too. But can still yeah. squeeze. It's just insatiable, the, the demand for, 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 for that product. Can you... Can you flood it too much? Can you overdo it? You, you, I, I'm sure the NFL is being very careful and thoughtful about that. They've always been the most savvy of the leagues in terms of their media exposure and their, their, the way they developed a national media brand while the other leagues were, were regional um, in the way they did Would you TV. call it international? It's in Frankfurt. And, and they've been very deliberate about international, whether it's England, uh, Frankfurt, fanatic Mexico. they over in Europe. Yeah, and, and I think the one to watch on this front is, is Apple. Hmm. Apple TV Plus... It has been dipping its toes into the water with its Major League Soccer uh, uh, rights uh, deal. And they're putting ads in those. They're putting video advertising in those, in those games on MLS. And that's just the beginning, is my, my prediction for Apple TV+. Plus. It makes sense that Apple TV+, Plus would add a, a, a lower-priced ad-supported tier so that they can justify those increases that they've been, they've been putting on, on consumers for Apple TV+. Plus.